What's going on guys? Mitch here. Today we're checking out the Chavez Ultramar. Uh, this is the rendition, I want to call it the rendition, but it's not spelt that way. It's like Rendencion or something, 229. Uh, it's a super, super popular knife. And uh, this guy is available in both the Tanto and a drop point variety. Uh, I was lucky enough to actually acquire both to check out. And I uh, wanted to kind of show you guys what they're all about, how they come in the box and uh, what to kind of expect. And also to give you a little bit of history on them, just, uh, just to kind of give you guys an idea. As always, this is a super casual conversation. Please don't uh, expect anything less than just uh, fireside chat. Some good information and uh, that is about it. So let's get into this one and uh, see what we got. So uh, out of the box, uh, I should probably, you know what, why don't I show what's in the box here and, uh, and kind of review them together. So uh, move this guy to the side. So this is how it comes. Nice little Ultramar logo on the box. Hopefully the light can kind of pick up some cool stuff there. Um, serial number, I'm assuming. Nothing too crazy. Pretty blacked out, to be honest. Uh, so, for most of you guys, maybe a Saturday night kind of look. Hopefully not, but uh, that's what the box looks like. Uh, it's magnetic, so pops open, nice and easy on the front, as such. Uh, really nice, I should say. Uh, really, really, really nice, actually, kind of presentation of uh, the knife itself. And uh, what I like about this on the inside is the fact that it comes with two different clips. So one of the things that uh, Chavez is kind of known for is this skull clip. And unfortunately for a lot of people, they don't like that skull clip. And uh, for whatever reason, they you know when that is all you're seeing in your pocket, right? Uh, they go, oh, it looks stupid. So you know what? They've started coming with an extra clip. So if this bugs you and you don't like the skull clip or, oh, Mitch, the, uh, the skull for has four head screws and looks stupid. That's awesome. You don't have to have the skull forehead screws. You can have the regular flat, non forehead, regular screwy things. So I apologize for imitating you, but honestly, you should read some of the comments on this stuff. It's just ridiculous. Um, anyway, so you get that cool clip and nothing too fancy about it. It is titanium, which is awesome. But the rest of the package here comes with the little skull clip, which is cool. Now, when I was talking to you earlier about how I had two of these guys, it's like, yeah, they're cool. Why do you need two? Well, I'm going to tell you why. So here we go. So one of them is what we call a Tanto and the other is what we call a drop point. This guy is the Tanto, as you can see, and what the Tanto is, is just the blade here. So on this, as we can see, real nice grind. Oof, that is a beautiful grind. But the Tanto is the cut that's into the blade here. So uh, instead of it being a nice belly on there, it's more of a, a hard angle. Or I guess that'd be, what would that be? Like an obtuse angle? I'm trying to remember like grade seven math. Uh, whereas this guy is the standard uh, drop point. So very similar designs, but different enough that a lot of people probably like myself, uh, want to know which one they should pick up. Because there's enough variety between them that uh, honestly, you want to know which one to pick. So, you know, do you want the, the regular belly on it? Or do you want, you know, the super cash? Uh, or I guess more aggressive, not super cash, what am I talking about here? Uh, or the more aggressive uh, version here where uh, you have that little tanto. Um, I'll be honest, between the two, like from a practicality point of view, um, you know, originally when I was getting into knives, people were like, oh, you know, tantos suck, they're useless, you're not going to use them, etc. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but I love tantos, man. Uh, they're great. They just look terrific. And uh, there's certainly something that, you know, like everything, it's very useful having that bottom little lip. I'm kind of surprised that uh, more people don't use them, to be honest. Anyway, so yeah, between the two here, like I said, we got the, the Tanto and the Drop Point. I apologize, I was just playing some lighting. It's looking really yellow for some reason. Um, so, which one do I prefer? So, as I was kind of talking about there, you know, it, it's a personal choice. You know, on the one hand, with the Tanto, which is this one, 
you get a you know you get a little more usability on the bottom edge when you are trying to cut something um, say uh, you know maybe Amazon packages or whatever you can kind of hit the tape real nice um, how can I kind of show this here let's use the old bug out so say the bug out is the surface and uh, you're trying to get a cut on well you can kind of just use that edge rather than the belly which is a little more of a wide uh, contact point on the drop point so you know some people like it some people don't um, between the two uh, you know I just I like them because it's a thick beefy uh, tactical feeling knife and uh, I just like that about them um, you know get what get get whichever you prefer um, if it were mine you know like Tanto super cool drop points you know it's uh, probably the more popular of the two they're probably making two to one of these I'm guessing maybe three four to one so uh, Tanto might be rare I don't know but uh, they both look awesome take your pick there's nothing wrong with either um, if we want to move into size I know that's uh, super common question that people want to know when you're showing a knife so let's let's uh, split this down the middle so uh, as to not discriminate against the tanto or the draw point we are coming in at uh, about eight inches i'd say a little over maybe hair over eight inches on the tanto and me yeah about the same eight and an eighth eight and a just a hair over so an eight inch eight inch knife with a three and a half inch blade Pretty standard. Did I even measure that right? Uh, three, maybe a little more than three, huh? Three and a half. No, three and a half. The usability on the blade, three and three eighths. So, you know, really good everyday carry kind of kind of sizing on these guys, which is awesome. And something that you're not going to have any problems with. Um, now, I'm going to go into the drop point. Um, just kind of put this away to kind of show a little more specifics on things. But let's take a look here. So from a features perspective, uh, we've got some real nice thick jimping on here. Uh, real comfortable and, and to me, the thicker the jimping on a knife, um, I would say the more usable it is for say, uh, like working with the gloves on, if that makes sense. Because some knives, they have some real light jimping and it's like, oh, it's great for when you're um, you know, when you don't have gloves on or, uh, you know, you're using a skin, so you don't want to cut yourself, but this is a very aggressive, very sharp jimping. I'm assuming, you know, given the size of the, the knife, the thickness of it, this is a very work first design. Uh, so real comfortable and very usable on the jimping, honestly, very, very usable, real nice. So love that. I, I love that on the profile of it, as you can kind of see here that uh, you know the jimping starts on the actual handle itself and continues onto the blade so you can really choke up right on top uh, which is very flat on top and usable actually right down to the tip it's got a nice creased line very thin but it's usable um, there's a nice little choil on the bottom so that if you really did want to slide your finger in there and get up for those real close cuts it, it's small I, I don't know if i'd use it personally and let's be honest that's not really the design of this knife this isn't a delicate little baby slicer where you're trying to peel off baby cherries or something or skin off baby cherry tomatoes it's like no this is like gonna smash that if you want to make a mad nada if you know what i mean so uh next up the pocket clip like i said it's awesome it's stamped in there and you have the choice of one or two uh, on the lock bar uh, yeah, we do have a separate metal in there, which is uh, something I love. As uh, I hope you guys have kind of come to know by now, but I, I like that there's a separate metal in there uh, for the lock bar, just to reduce wear. Uh, it is a uh, it is a thumb stud flicker, uh, and you know what? Like some of these guys, I think I've seen on one of the videos where there was a guy that did have a flipper version of it. It wouldn't be too hard if you're looking at this to kind of put a little flipper tab or a pocket pecker, as Mr. Shabazz says, um, it wouldn't be too difficult. And I, they must be out there because I've seen them. Unless it's on their, uh, I think the street version of this, which is basically just a, a smaller version, like a mini without calling it a mini, they just call it a street. Um, which, you know, I looked at the street and uh, the street rendition 229 and uh, honestly, it's just, it's a little small for a guy like me. I'm six foot three, bigger hands. You know what they say about guys with big hands? They like bigger knives. Come on, you think I'm going there? Give it a rest. Anyway, so back to the lock bar, off track as always. 
like I said, don't uh, don't judge me. Uh, back to the lock bar. It is a titanium full frame lock bar, uh, which is terrific. Uh, real nice, real nice work. Uh, made by Riot, so you know you guys know what to expect on this. It shouldn't be anything uh, other than perfection at a production level. Real, real nice. All around, you've got some real nice details. It's kind of a, a stonewash design, and uh, it's at a price point, you know, 350 bucks, I think, 360 bucks. So it's it's at a price point where, um, you know, it's well below a Chris Reeves, it's below a, a Hinderer, but the quality, uh, you know, don't judge me, guys. I think it's on par or better than like a Hinderer. Sorry. It's, uh, I'm Canadian, so I'm gonna apologize, but uh, the quality is actually real, real nice. Riot is one of those brands that um, I will, without a doubt, um, it holds, they just seem to hold their value better than most Chinese brands, which is strange. Um, but that is what it is. Um, so if we're gonna continue on looking at this, uh, Ergo's, like I said, the jimping's good. It's very boxy feeling, it's very simple. It's got a single cutout for your front finger, which is uh, pretty standard nowadays. So it's, it's grabbable, it's comfortable, it's gonna be good in gloves. On the back side of the handle, uh, it's not uh, further cut, so it's not going to, um, it's just gonna be comfortable. That's all it is, that's all there is to it. It's gonna be comfortable uh, depending on where, where you choke up on the handle and the size of your hand. It's just gonna be a nice, comfortable knife. Um, you know, some history on Chavez, on this guy. So obviously, you know, he's, uh, he's a custom builder. And in this case, he made, uh, I wanna say, so this is the rendition 229 or Rendencian 229. Uh, I wanna say he, it was called the 228. That is uh, the version of this guy. So uh, if you can find a 228, um, you know, first of all, you're gonna be paying probably four times the price as this. It's gonna be made in, uh, you know, locally versus overseas, but uh, just cool. It's got a cool factor to it. And a lot of people really dig that, which is awesome. So uh, a couple more things, uh, the action on them, it's real nice. So back to the Tanto, just so we guys know. Uh, the action on this, like, it's, I'm gonna kind of zoom out, sorry, just to kind of show this a little bit better here, but uh, check this out. So if I pop, uh, I should say this. So once you pop the frame, there's a little bit of play here. And what that is, is it's engaging. I don't know if it's, an, if it's like an angled, uh, like a wedge on the bar lock. I haven't taken this guy apart, but it's uh, definitely stepping something up and then it engages like that. You can see, and once you're past this little dead point here, I'm like, look, bloop, 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 total dead zone. Um, once you're past that, it like is, look at this, like, bloop. So, you know, it's not as drop shutty as some people like, but like, if I sat this here like this, it will drop, shot by itself. It's such good action. And these guys aren't broken in at all. So keep that in mind. Super easy to, to hammer out with a nice thumb stud kick. Uh, feel wise, it's very similar to a McNeese. Now, unfortunately for me, I just traded my McNeese PM2, uh, Mac, sorry, PM Mac 2, three and a half. But I would say that's the closest thing to these knives. So it's also double the price currently in Canada. But uh, real nice feel to them. Uh, very strong. Uh, and just with you know the skull clip and then the grind on the on the blade itself It's just a very cool looking aggressive heavy-duty knife um, Now I'm gonna put the tanto back away and like I said the action look it's like false shetty uh, I also actually want to before I put this away. I want to show one thing guys so when you uh, when you do have a knife that is a flipper unlike this and Typically right the flipper tab is gonna be right here. Okay, and it's gonna stick out. So if we grab, for example, the Jurassic, which is actually a very similar knife, not in, uh, this one's a magnet cut obviously, but see how there's that little little tab? And I was joking earlier about how Nick Shabazz calls that a pocket pecker, because it looks like a little uh, little pee pee that's sticking up there when it's in your pocket. Now, these guys make use of that because they kind of countersink that angle in, and you don't even notice it. But here's, here's what I like about the flipper tab. When you have a frame lock with a flipper tab and you drop the blade, okay? One, that tab will hit your hand, okay? Two, it makes it so that it can't cut into your hand when it is in the way, okay? So having that little detent on here that kind of gives it a little dead zone, just like this, a little dead zone, and you can feel it, right? And then it falls, right? Just like that. 
This is what that will break into, honestly, over time, I'm telling you right now, once you pass the point, bloop, down it goes, okay? Now, not having a flipper tab here and having the action not super drop shutty means that when you disengage this, it's gonna fall, right? And look where it already hit my finger. Just like that, not even trying. And that's why you can probably see on my thumb, it's all like scuffed up. That's not from blowing lines of cocaine, that's from knives dropping onto the nail. So over time, it's kind of nice that it's not fall shut like the Norseman. It drops down, but it's like controlled and it's just cash. Like it's just, you know, with a little bit of hand action, you can do it um, pretty simple yourself, but it's not too hard. You're not gonna slice yourself like crazy. So, comparables. So I've already talked about, we've got the Jurassic, which is actually very similar. I'm assuming we would put like an XM18 three and a half in here, very similar, um, just based on the handle more than anything. Uh, because it's a bigger knife, uh, the Koenig, we could put that in there as well, the Arius. Super, super popular. A little different price point, about double on this, but uh, you know, being made overseas, that's how they get around that. Um, the Zahn, as always, you know, these guys are about 600 bucks versus 350, so very similar, right? Heavy, heavy built knives. Uh, it's in, I would say, in that category. The uh, Demco, 8020 as well. Uh, I would definitely put in the category just based on uh, the fact that it's overbuilt, heavy handle. And uh, you know what, maybe that's kind of where I'd go with this. It's very Demco-y. A little smaller, not by much, but very Demco-y in the thickness of it. And uh, I know I never show how thick thing or thin or thick or whatever, but yeah, very similar, very similar. So let's, let's uh, keep on rolling with the comparables here. I already did the Zahn. Uh, ba -ba 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 I'm not gonna get into the dressy stuff. We can maybe do the Spartan Harsey. You're starting to get into a much bigger blade at that point as well um, but it's relevant because i guess you know what it's it's us made it's actually not a bad deal on the harsey i actually really like that about the harsey um, but it is quite a bit more knife and it is more of a it is just a flat grind on there thinner blade stock all around but very similar nonetheless very nice knives. Now, one thing, uh, you know what? Do I have, uh, just to kind of show you the upper end here of size-wise, uh, 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 um, let's get a XM24 as well. We put that in the conversation. A lot of people with that XM24 don't realize it's not as big of a knife as they think it is. Like if you look compared to the Koenig Arius, <laughs> it's honestly not much bigger. The handle feels a lot bigger, but blade-wise, it's really not much bigger or longer. So XM24, and if anyone has a sweet tie handle or something that's black to match this, let me know, because I would love to make uh, this guy nice and blacked out. And also, just having the hinders. Look at the difference on that, eh? America. That's the America, the colors. Come on, guys. Come on, don't judge me. Um, anyway. So that, that's kind of what I'd compare it to. Uh, the closest, you know, I'm thinking Demco more than the, the Zahn for sure. And uh, the Harsey is definitely on the larger side. That's kind of what I'd put them together with. I'm just trying to think, uh, I've got a, you know what would be a real nice comparable actually is uh, the Something Obscene J Cape three and a half. I don't have one yet, it's on the way actually, but that would be something that uh, would be great. And I'll tell you what, when I get that, I'll make a video and I'll, I'll throw this in there as a comparison, how's that? And if things go right with the YouTube timing, why don't I put that one out the week after this one? Should be quick. So, I'm gonna say uh, it's very Demco-esque, obviously, but it's also very Spartan Harsey and very Arius-y and uh, it's very knifey. How's that? Is that a pretty fair statement? Very knifey. Very knifey. So I would hope it would be. Um, one of the other things that I uh, wanted to talk about with this knife is when we get a knife that's got such a thick blade stock like this, and I'll zoom in to show that, but uh, 
you know, we've got such a thick blade stock relative to that category, I'd say. Um, you know, people go, oh, it's, it's thick, it's not gonna be as slicey, it's not gonna be as usable. Well, I'll tell you this, this is a hollow grind. And if we're looking at this, okay, and I'm hoping the camera can kind of pick up some light here, and also hopefully some of that beautiful grind line. Oh, look at that, guys. Isn't that nuts? It's like it's got, uh, it's like it's got like tree lines. That is a stunning blade, man. Oof. Thank goodness the window's facing that way, because that is just, ooh, I should do more stuff like that. Look at that. Look at the lines down. That actually angle right there kind of shows it. So a hollow grind means that down the blade here, it's not flat. It's not a wedge angle. It's, uh, you can see how it's kind of cut in like a, like a little, like, well, something hollow. So it's like a cup, right? It's angled in. So it's like, whoop, like that like a C or a U, I suppose. So that's a hollow grind. So what that means is on the blade itself, and I don't know how I'm gonna show this because it's not gonna focus on anything, but what it means is on the blade itself down here, it is extremely thin, extremely thin and slicey. And uh, my buddy JD keeps telling me, you know what, you gotta, you gotta start showing rather than doing. Uh, showing that it's sharp. So I'm gonna track down a piece of paper here. Uh, hopefully it's not my tax return that I'll need, but uh, there we go, piece of paper. And I'm gonna try to show, just like, back to the blade. So when it's thicker, it's not slicey. And slicey means when you can kind of cut down something and through something really nice and easy, nice and slicey. And typically you need a thinner blade for that, like a bug out or something. And uh, if we compare, actually, let's see if I can find a bug out. If you compare a bug out, like look how much thinner that stock is on there. It's, uh, it, it might not seem like crazy amounts, but it's enough that it makes a significant difference. And the bug out is, is just a flat grind. Hollow grind, just like a Chris Reeves, weird. So let's see, let's see what kind of damage we can do with a piece of paper. Uh, like, like, come on. It's like nothing, it's like, and this is a thick blade, guys. Like, I can turn this, if I can actually grab it, but I can turn as I go, like it's nuts, that's nothing. So, you know what, extremely slicey blades. Super pumped on that one. And uh, honestly, guys, the difference between the Tanto and the flat grind or the drop point, sorry, not flat grind. The Tanto and the drop point, it's real tough. Like you look at the, I think it's called the Liber, or is it Liberation 229? Liber, I don't wanna call it Liberator because that's a sexual positioning unit. But uh, <laughs> on, uh, on this one, uh, you know, the difference between the Tanto and the drop point is not as, as big as people would think it would be. Um, it's very similar, obviously you look at, uh, Let's go right in on the blade. That would actually be kind of make more sense when I'm talking about it, eh? The camera wants to fall. I'm sorry about that. I wish I could lock the lens. Um, so if we're looking at this blade here, okay? So top's Tanto, bottom's drop point. So you can just kind of see nice little belly on this, flat and then into a belly, whereas this is flat with an angle and then into, instead of a nice curve, it's very not sure which one you prefer. Both are cool. Both look awesome with this grind. Both are both are nice hollow grinds on it. You know, that's they're just terrific knives. Um, I don't know which one I'm going to keep, but I've got to I've got to move one of them because I don't need both. Uh, I just don't see the need for them. Having both. <clears throat> Sorry, just cracking voice here. Just going through puberty, guys. No big deal. Just going going through puberty. You know, even though I was born in the '80s. No big deal. Um, anyway, so um, there we go. That's, uh, I would say, I think I've gone over, oh, I should also say the thumb studs, really comfortable. Uh, they are nice and rounded as well. I know that's always uh, a concern. You know, could they round it more? Sure, but it just adds to that metally kind of cool, in your face, tactical look. Um, and then I also wanted to talk on one thing, okay? So when you are looking at a knife that is made overseas at a price point, 
typically what they'll do is they'll try to cut costs, right? So on, uh, on some higher, higher end stuff, and I'm talking, you know, like I said, these are 350 or whatever. Um, once you kind of get into that 500, 600, 700, 800, thousand dollars knife price point, the fit and finish goes right up there. And with that, I'll be honest, it's a diminishing return. It really is. So, you know, you start looking at around this knife, it's very plain, right? You know, flat cut on the actual, uh, like it's just sheet stock, right? Flat, very, very simple cuts all around. In terms of the angling on this, it's probably a 45 degree, but it's not rounded and it has some sharp points on it. A uh, couple that I noticed right away inside the rear here, um, it's a little sharp. So uh, little, and these are very, very nitpicky details. It's a little sharp in there that it's just difficult to kind of, difficult to kind of do something. As well on the lock bar, I think I had one right in here. It's just a little, it's a little sharp. Nothing crazy. Like these are nitpicks guys that I'm not even like, like, don't leave comments below. Oh, you're such a blah, blah, blah. I'm telling you, these are like, if you guys want to know nitpicky, this is nitpicking. Like this is such peanuts guys. Like it's a comfortable freaking knife. But here I am talking about sharp points, like on a knife you use with a glove or not. Like it's just, anyway, very, very minuscule kind of things. And uh, just when they are having to cut costs, they just tend to do it on very, very little things. And that would be on kind of just, the fit and finish around it is uh, not super rounded up here as well, kind of on the point tip of the knife. It's just, uh, it's it's a little rough because it's they ha it has to be. They're not going to pay some guy. Super sharp, like I said, on the lock bar right there. A couple hot spots, but that's it. Pocket clip feels great in the hand, surprisingly. Um, yes, it's got forehead skulls, uh, forehead screws. Like, chill out. It's not a big deal. It's got an over-travel stop, which is awesome. And... Uh, it's just so nice, guys. Like, honestly, this is just absolutely incredible knife. So, so fortunate to have them, and uh, I'm just lucky. I'm lucky to have them and really, really enjoyed having them. Like, they're so cool. If you, if, uh, if you guys have any ideas on which one you, I should keep, you know, let me know. I need some input here because I can't decide. And I think that will wrap things up for me. Appreciate you guys stopping by and checking out the knives. And uh, if you have any questions, opinions, feedback, uh, anything, leave me leave me a comment below. Like, subscribe, share, all that stuff. And uh, until next time, we'll catch you around. All right. Cheers, guys. Peace.